Hey guys! <laughs> I don't want to say hey guys. Shh, no, let's not waste any time. China, I'm a busy woman. But nothing can compare to when you live. How many? So annoying! I can't do this. You're just so annoying. <laughs> hey guys! Um, it's your girl China, and I'm back with another video. And for today, we're doing another real talk episode. That's why I have my mama over here. You know, like the most annoying person in the whole entire world. But. <laughs> so for today, what are we going to be talking about? Huh? <laughs> well, we are going to talk what? about um, remembering loved ones that we have lost um, because it was recently what we call in the Philippines All Souls Day, November, yeah, November 1. 1. And that's the day like when you, you visit remember. the cemetery yeah, and, and you, like, you just pay yeah. respects to your you know, Yeah, you honor the ones that have passed on. Mm. So with that, we're going to be talking about our experiences, losing loved ones, those close to us, and also how we coped with it. So for me, like the first time I lost someone in the family was when I was in college. Um, I lost an aunt, the mother of uh, one of my closest cousins, and um, I lost two aunts. Oh, I lost three aunts, and um, I also lost um, my grandmother. Um, the mother of my mother so that was the first time that i had um experienced um losing anyone in the family and what about you what about so when was the first time okay so like the my first experience with death like in the family would be like my two great grandmothers like i remember we even like traveled all the way to the province just so that um we can have her buried there and it was like a whole thing and it was i think that's very memorable so yeah yeah, so, um, so we both had some experience like losing a family member before we lost our most important family member, um, which was my mother and China's Lola. Um, so I'm gonna start this <laughs> Oh my god! I can't say anything yet. So this happened around six years ago um, when she was in high school. And um, what happened was my my mom, who was really like, um, she's like really like the matriarch of our family, and she really was um, a very um, strong force um, in the family. She um, she had cancer, she had lymphoma, and um, later on she developed um, leukemia as well. And um, she was very hard-headed and very stubborn. <laughs> very, very stubborn, like um, the max. She was very stubborn and she didn't want any medical help until it was much, much, much too late. Yeah. So um, basically it was pretty quick, a couple of years. And she left us um, around six years ago. And yeah, we were kind of expecting it already because but, um, we were kind of expecting it but because of her condition and it was her, really and worsening she was really a lot. deteriorating yeah. um, like really quickly. But it was still a surprise. Yes. So that's one a point that I I want to emphasize. Like no matter how much you expect it to happen, like you're never gonna be actually truly ready for it. Yes, you will never be ready for it because like we were expecting it. We knew that there was no way that she was going to be healed or anything but then when it actually happened it still like really rocked our world and um turned everything inside out and we were still like really really shocked so do you want to describe like how you felt when it happened it happened for me like when my grandmother passed away was literally like moments before she died she was already because we sleep in the same room and basically every night we're together and we, like, we talk late at night and everything and she never really told me like i think this is it until there was this one night we were just it was after dinner and then she was sitting on her bed and then she told me like china i think this is it already and everything and then i was like no you know like i didn't take her seriously oh, like no, I <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways so i didn't take her seriously because like right why would you say that and then she started what do you call it? Like she started shaking? Yeah, like shaking. Mm -hmm. And like something was wrong, like she couldn't breathe or something. So then like we told you, like we went to the room and we were like, hey Lola's, I mean Lola means grandmother. And I was like, Lola's, something is happening to Lola. And then 
you guys went in and then you decided to rush her to the hospital. And then... Oh no, I'm gonna cry again! <laughs> so basically, oh. like, what I remember was, oh um, I really distinctly and very, very clearly remember was that when she came out of the room, she still made it down the stairs, but only halfway down the stairs. Mm. And then when she was halfway down the stairs, she sort of, like, gave her last breath um and she sort of like inhaled and then when she exhaled it's like all the life went out of her and our houseboy at that time like sort of ran and um yeah, carried caught her. her caught her and um carried her to the car we and she was at the back seat of the car with our houseboy like um still like with her in his arms and we rushed her to the hospital and i was like i knew that she probably wasn't breathing anymore, but in my head I was like, um, no, no, this is not gonna happen, and you know, mm -hmm. um, we can still revive her. So we rushed her to the emergency room where they put her on life support, um, but basically she had already gone. Um, they brought in a priest, and they told me that she had already gone, um, and it was they were just waiting for me to give an okay to take her off life support. So. Um, they but moved then I her. Went. Yeah, no, not yet. Oh. They moved her to an ordinary room, and then I said, "Okay, we're not gonna take her off life support until like the kids can, can come and say goodbye to her." So I went. This is this all in the middle of night. Everybody yeah. was asleep. So and I had exams the next day. Yeah. So I went <laughs> back home to to wake them up, um, and she woke up and um, she came to the hospital to say bye like I remember I super remember that moment like I was sleeping already and I knew that Lola was in the hospital but I didn't know that she like you know like passed out or whatever like halfway through because I was scared like when she was like shaking and I called you guys I just said that I didn't even say bye I didn't even say bye but I was just like I left and I went to the room and I was like I don't want to see this I don't want to see this happen so I just like you know blocked everything and then I fell asleep and basically I think our helper was waking me up or something, or I think it was you who was waking me up and saying, hey, come on, let's go say bye. Let's go say bye to Lola in the hospital. And then I was like, I think I was in shock. Like, I was very numb. Like, I didn't feel anything. Like, I didn't really truly feel that, you know, that she was gone. I think, like, it hasn't registered to me yet. Like, I remember going inside that hospital room and she was, like, on the, on the bed and she was still having, like, involuntary, like, twitches, uh -huh, I guess. Uh -huh. Yeah. And like you guys were like, okay, China, you can like say bye to her now. Like, um, she probably like can't hear you or whatever, but it's nice to be able to say bye. And then you guys left me in the room so I could say bye. I literally remember just standing there. I wasn't crying. I wasn't, I was literally just there and I was just looking at her. I couldn't even say anything. Like, I was just, I don't know, like, it wouldn't register that she actually had passed away already. Yep. So, like, um,. I think the most difficult part for me like in that whole process was seeing her um, afterward when her body was being transported from the hospital to the to morgue. the what do you call it to the morgue, morgue. Um, because that was like really like reality like oh my god she's she's just a body now you know she's just um, a body and she's really not there so um, y you, you know when you lose a loved one you don't think of these technical details like that but um, it, it, that, that's it, that's reality and you have to make like all of these important decisions and it's so hard because you're dealing with your shock and your your grief yeah, and then but, you also have to plan everything yeah but, yeah, but like, you have to like deal with everything else and yeah. um, and I'm an only child so like I didn't really have um, help from anyone. much help um, and yeah that was that was really the difficult part for me and in, in the first like few weeks after she had died I just kept like repeating every little single detail in my mind like how we brought her to the hospital how she looked in the hospital and in the emergency room and every single little detail is like I was holding on to every memory and I would like purposely repeat like every single detail in my mind because I was afraid like that I'd forget hmm. I think for me like right after um, what happened was right after we came from the hospital, like we got home and it was already morning and basically it was only me who got, who went home because everyone stayed and then I just went into the room and then that's when I cried. <laughs> like when I got home, that's when everything like sunk in and I was just like crying and I was like, okay, now I'm going to cry. Wait. <laughs> 
So basically, so basically, no, so basically, I was like, oh my god, she's gone. And I was just like crying and crying. So losing her was really like difficult, even though we were expecting it. Um, because like like I said, she's a very strong force in our family. Um, she raised me. She was um, a single raised mom who raised me, yeah. me um, all by herself. And um, but we got especially. I became like really dependent on her when I when I had kids. Um, and like that, there were like really years that I um. <laughs> this but video was literally a cry fest. <laughs> it was very difficult um to not have her around because I was just so dependent on her for like because I was working and everything. I was just so dependent on her for a lot of things and basically being my whole support system. So when I lost her, it's like really I lost my. <laughs> my family my support Aww. system because she's really literally she's the only one um and it's been a while <laughs> <laughs> i know it's been a while already and it was hard um in the first couple of months of course it gets a lot easier as time goes by but there are just like moments when <laughs> when it will hit you when you really like um miss her a lot or so true or when you remember, like you remember her voice and the funny things that she <laughs> said and or you know, just yeah, certain things that you remember sure. about her. So it will just hit you um every so often. But definitely like it gets better, the pain gets better. Um after a while. Yeah. After years. For me I guess losing her was really hard also because like oh, I'm gonna cry. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, because like as she said like she she was like very like head of the family like you know how like dads are usually like head of the family that was her she was like doing everything she was in charge of everything i, feel, I was and in charge of everything but she was just like <laughs> basically she was like the she was like the stand-in mom for me when mom was gone because mom would always like travel and she's always at work and like it's always lola who was there and taking care of me and like going with me to school and everything and like <laughs> like even just doing my hair and like yeah. preparing my food and like she'd always like i remember every time i'd be scared like i'd always go to her room and sleep beside her and <laughs> but yeah like she was really close to my heart and i was really really close to her like you know how people are like um like a mom either mom or a dad's girl like a mom's girl or a dad's girl i was a lawless girl like truly through and through i was a lawless girl oh my god <laughs> what is this no but i like yeah like she was really close to my heart that's why it was hard like i remember who i took like a few days of leave from school after she passed because i really i was just with mom at the wake and everything and yeah, this is very i know this is like therapy <laughs> that we never had <laughs> But, um, so yeah, like when I, I remember going back to school and my friends knew that I'd lost her and they were very, you know, like empath empathetic, empathetic, but it was also really hard. Like I remember I just like suddenly out of nowhere would cry in school, especially when there were like lectures on like death and the afterlife, especially, <laughs> but like, yeah, I was very emotional and yeah, like, at, like her, like I would also have moments, like random moments, like. I just be like, oh, I wish she was here. Like especially with like graduations and like yeah. milestones. <laughs> like I remember she'd always just be like during my recital, she'd always see a hand doing that. <laughs> and like every time I perform, but now like it's not there anymore. But yeah. Oh, yeah, so basically like oh! Basically we love her and we miss her. <laughs> the, the the grief gets better, but it's better. like you'll always miss that person yeah. that you that you lost. You like um you'll always always miss them. It'll never stop. The missing will never stop. It'll take a while for you to accept that they're gone. Maybe even for a while you're gonna be in denial that they're actually gone. Yeah. But then you'll get that, you'll what do you call it? You'll accept it and you'll just realize how much you love them and that you're always gonna miss them because they'll always be a part of your life. So we also decided to do this video because 2018 was quite a tragic year. For like our loved ones who have lost their loved ones and also people close to us have passed away. Yeah, so, so it was quite a tragic year. Quite a few of them lost family members. Um, and we lost someone who was quite dear to us as well. She's the sister of my ex. Um, China knew up, uh, grew up knowing her as well, yeah. um, and 
uh, the brother of um, one of my best friends and both of these people um, were my age so quite young because I am young <laughs> but oh, yes. yes no, <laughs> oh my God. no but quite young quite young um, so you know we 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 know what their loved ones are going through went through and are going through and it's really difficult. So basically this video was just to commemorate everyone that we've lost and also to tell everyone, like all of you guys that who have lost someone recently or maybe not so recently that it's hard. It's hard to lose someone, especially someone that you're very, very close to. It's gonna hurt like hell. It's gonna leave a hole in your heart for sure. And But I just want to tell you guys that that hole in your heart will, you know, like it's gonna be fixed. It's gonna be refilled. Maybe like from love, from all these other people you still have in your life. But one thing's for sure is that you're always gonna miss that person that you've lost because they've already like made a dent in your life, you know, like they're part of your life. Like even if they're gone, they're still a part of your life 100%. And they're watching over you and you know, they're, yeah, and they're still there. And one more thing, I, I just wanna add like, while you still have your loved ones, your parents, especially your grandparents in your life, like really treasure yeah. all the moments that you have with them because you're never gonna know yes and be kinder to them more patient spend more time with them yeah so basically just like really um take advantage of the time you have with everyone in your life don't let any moment pass by that you know like you know you're gonna regret like um always tell your loved ones that you love them that you're thankful for them because you don't know when they're going to pass away Alright, so that's it for today's video. I hope that we've you liked what we shared today and that you say I love you to your loved ones more. <laughs> but yeah, so you can go follow her on Instagram. Leave it here. Follow me on Instagram. Like this video if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe down below. And I'm going to see you next time. But first, um, just wait after this outro i'm gonna be leaving photos and everything of people that have passed away that's really close to us so it's more of like an in memoriam thing so yeah just to commemorate everyone we've lost and but still very very much love so yeah that's all guys bye, bye.